Show of hands, who's heard this one before? Right, you've heard it before. This is the story of uh, Thomas and uh, unfairly, as I'm sure you've heard sermons about how unfair it is to call him Doubting Thomas. You all know why he's doubting Thomas. He questions the resurrection. Um, but Thomas is not the person that you kind of expect a doubter to be. Um, you might have heard this. If you haven't heard this sermon, I'll give you a quick summary. Um, Thomas is the brave one. Thomas is tough. In fact, even in the children's sermon, who do we use for Thomas, Harvey? Hulk. The Hulk. The Hulk. In our Bible stories, Thomas is the Hulk because he is tough as nails. He shows up, and in the story of Jesus, we have Jesus at one point saying, hey, let's go to Jerusalem. And they're like, whoa, 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 buddy. If we go to Jerusalem, you're going to get stoned. That's what happened last time. There was stoning. We barely escaped with our lives. And Jesus is like, I'm going anyway. Because Jesus is tough like that. And Thomas, just as tough, goes, if he goes to die, then I'll die with him. Man, Thomas is cool. Thomas has this really cool story, but Thomas is considered the doubter in this story. I'm going to talk about this story, though, from a different perspective. I think it's wild that Thomas has the reaction he has as the tough guy, but more importantly, I think he's struck by these wounds. That's why he asks about them. Thomas is the hero of many stories, but in this one, he wants to see wounds. Why? Today is something that I want to tell us as important to God is wounds, how we are, warts, scars, all those things are important to God. And I think that they're so important that God's going to use them for perfect purpose. So here we go. Are you ready? It starts off, Thomas had front row seats to the Lazarus affair. You saw the Lazarus event that was talked to about uh, Lorne. You guys know what Lazarus is, the, the rising of Lazarus. Okay, this guy was not dead for a day, if you forgot. He was dead for a long time, a really long time. Pastor Lauren said the, the shortest verse in the Bible is um, Jesus wept. Another short verse is, but Lord, he stinketh. That, that's in the King James, if you get a, get a chance. This guy has been dead for a long time. Three days. So much so that when Jesus shows up, they're like, you're late. You should have been here a couple of days ago. Jesus shows up and he does this big dramatic, roll away the stone. Let him come out. And they're like, ooh, no. Don't roll away. Do you understand what happened? It's a biological miracle, not just an incredible miracle that somebody has passed away the day before. But someone has passed away days before and he's like, I'm going to raise them to new life. So Thomas... Coming to the disciples, then being like, we've seen the Lord. He's back. You would think Thomas would be like, duh. That's so Jesus. That's exactly what he would do. He, comes, he brings things back from the dead. But this isn't the case. Weird that Thomas is the one going, eh, I'm going to have to see this to believe it. In fact, he goes further and says, I'm going to need to see those holes in his hands. I'm going to need to see the hole in his side. I was there. He's dead. What is it about this moment that strikes Thomas, that Thomas isn't okay with him coming back? I think it has something to do with Thomas seeing an execution, which is very different from somebody just passing away, which is what Lazarus did. Jesus claimed he was king according to those charges that were laid against him, and he didn't argue it at all. Jesus came to town through the king's gate, riding what a king would ride, the descendant of David. People threw a party, and they're like, keep it down. He's like, folks would party, the rocks would party if they weren't. Then he flipped over money changers. <sighs> Then he's performing miracles, he's arguing with people. Finally, he's tried and executed for crimes against the state, for claiming he was king. Thomas doubts that Jesus would come back after something like that. If you need any more evidence of it, think about what he asks for. 
Show me the wounds. Show me how he was executed in his hands and his feet. Show me the wound on his side. Jesus, at best, isn't what he hoped for. At worst, Jesus failed to do what he thought he was supposed to do. I said people believed that this son of David would come and run the Romans out of town, but here he is being executed by the Romans in a Roman form of death and torture. This is the opposite of what the hope was for Jesus. And I wouldn't be surprised if Thomas is like, this isn't at all what we thought. We gather here under these lovely new lights um, to a cross that's well lit, I might add. Um, That's a symbol of death and torture created by the Romans that we have elevated to show victory over death. Great. But, I mean, it would be shocking if there was an electric chair up there, right? Right. That's a form of grisly execution and death that has been shown to be about God's triumph. Thomas is totally right in going, show me these. Because he's not who we thought. I'm okay with following his teachings and doing this, but executed by the Romans is a big thing. And then Jesus shows up. Jesus shows up, but wildly, he doesn't show up unblemished. He shows up with the wounds. The first time he arrived with the wounds. The first time he showed up with wounds on his hands, feet, side. Thomas is like, let me see that. And Jesus does. Shows up and goes, put your finger in there. Put your, put your hand in my side. Know this. I think there's something powerful to Jesus showing up blemished. Marks wounds. If any of you are wondering what that could mean for us as disciples, all we have to do is listen to what Jesus said. When he showed up, he said, as God sends me, so I send you. Forgive. Be a people of peace. So God sends me with these blemishes, with these wounds, so I send you. Many of us carry wounds. Injuries, mistakes, shortcomings, failures. And we wonder, are we good enough to be those people of peace that have been challenged to carry this gospel into the world? Disciples are pretty cool, right? Are we really that? With all of this, can I be that person that carries the good news? This message is for us. So I have been sent, so I send you. With these wounds, scars and all. If I hear one thing coming through this, it says scars, wounds, injuries, mistakes. Those are par. Those are part of it. That's how God decided to send his son back into the world. God decided to redeem the world through this injured human. This is not just some simple sermon to say, you're great. This is a profound statement that all of us, no matter how messed up we think we are, are made to be people of peace. We are sent into the world to carry this gospel of truth. God intends for us to carry our blemishes. God knows we're going to make mistakes. We're actually meant to heal from those mistakes. We carry scars which are hard-earned. So don't hide them. Bear them to the world. Share them with the world. Connecting people to a faith that isn't stored up in some pristine palace. Some perfect example. Some model of perfect living. I read, I read a book one time that says the good life is uh, considered um, associated closely with risk aversion. No. Scars are cool. Scars are cool. And We carry those into the world. God intends for us to have a living, breathing faith. Even though we fear, we can still believe. Even though we doubt, we can still believe. Even though we carry scars, God can still, and God does still say, I love you, and I'm going to use you to redeem the world. I had a taste of this the other day. Um, uh, You all have heard my continued saga of when, when my brain didn't work, um, it was off kilter, 
my vision. I saw a lot of things strangely. More like this is how I saw things. And um, my right side is still recovering. And one of the ideas to find out what caused that um, was a spinal tap. They didn't solve it. Spoiler alert. They didn't figure that out. But I did do a spinal tap. And uh, while I'm laying there, very vulnerable, I might add, my back exposed, and they're going to shove a needle in that, I was like, uh, 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 the lady is excellent at this. The nurse was like, hi, let me tell you about the procedure. Hey, where are you from? What do you do? And I was like, oh, uh, uh. I said, pastor, open up a can of worms on that one. <laughs> Always happens when I do that. Always happens when I do that. And she's like, oh, neat. And then she was like, oh, you're getting a spinal tap at your age. That's different. I'm like, well, and I tell her the whole story because I'm an open book and I'm a gluttonous extrovert and I like to tell stories. So I'm telling this story and she's like, that's wild. And then she goes, what? She stops and she goes, you live like five doors from me. And I'm like, what? And she goes, is this your address? And I was like, yes. And she goes, you're like five doors from me. I just moved there. I was like, hey, neighbor. <laughs> hey. I haven't met everybody in my neighborhood. <laughs> um, but she's like, oh, and your son, like, he rides a little bike. He's got a little Captain America helmet. I'm like, that's him. That's him. Yes, look at him. So from that conversation was conversation after conversation. You know what? The spinal tap wasn't so bad. People, I mean, it was still a spinal tap, so keep that in mind. But what I'm saying is that moment, which was heavy and hard, where I had to be honest about my own brokenness, where I had to be open about my own struggles. I don't know why I was seeing that way, why I was having those troubles with balance. My right hand, I still type things and they're odd. Um, but from that, God found a connection. God was able to do something. I shouldn't be surprised by that, but I was like, whoa. See, that's just a little example. I bet each one of you has wounds that you carry that when you are brave enough to share them with somebody. Have they said, well, I have a similar story. Have you been brave enough to share a time where you've struggled and someone go, I've struggled with that too. Because it's meaningful. There's something holy about those scars. There's something holy about those wounds. I want to make this crystal clear. God doesn't cause scars. God doesn't hurt us. But this world can sometimes cause pain, missteps. It can cause us to fail. It can cause us to stumble. It can hurt us at times. But hear this loud and clear. God's mission doesn't change. God is still going to use that, use those for a perfect purpose, which is to restore the world, which is to be people of peace, make us into these individuals. So I want you to hear this loud and clear. Really, truly. You are beautiful, wonderful people. You are worthy of God's love and respect. Warts and all. Mistakes, transgressions, because God sees in you the capacity to change the world through grace, peace, love, healing, hope. You have that potential. You have the potential to take those wounds and carry them out into the world and say, here they are. Just like Jesus. As I've been sent, so I send you. You have the capacity to say, I've got these wounds and struggles, but God is still going to use them. God is going to do that. If we learn anything from Thomas is that God believes in all of us. Wounds and all. I believe in you. This church is a mission of people that believe that we are going to change the world. Proof of that is God wouldn't have put us all together if God didn't mean to change the world for grace and peace. And that's good news. And for that I say, Amen.